As my 286 system has made some decent progress, and I would say the core of it seems to be running at this point, one of the next things that I need to add to it is a better video capability. Uh, while the two-line LCD is great, it's not quite what I'm trying to get to. So I am now considering what can I do for a VGA style of an output so that I can connect up to a VGA LCD screen as an example. And so the first thing that I'm starting to think through, I guess, as I get into this is my memory space. And just as a reminder, on the 286, if I was using protected virtual address mode, I could have 16 megabytes of addresses. However, I'm using real address mode, so that limits me to one megabyte. And if I kind of zoom into that first megabyte, this is what my current configuration looks like. The first one half of my system, uh, the first half of that one megabyte is for RAM, the next half megabyte is for ROM. And at the moment, I'm actually using quarter megabyte ROM, so a pair of them make up the half meg. That works well. I am using a pair of half meg RAM, so technically I have a megabyte of RAM, but I'm only essentially accessing half of it. I'm kind of wasting the other half. And I talked about that in a previous video where to find the RAM that's half the size is much harder to find and it's more expensive. So I'm just going to use the the larger RAM and waste half of it. But as I think about video, I don't want to do IO mapping. I want to do this more as uh, memory mapping as far as how I'm going to access the contents of my video RAM. So here's what I'm thinking at the moment. And as I go through this, I'm looking for feedback. If anybody uh, has a suggestion on how to alter this plan, uh, please let me know. I think I'm going to shrink my ROM down to 256k or a quarter meg and I'm going to increase my RAM to 640k and then in between that leaves 128k which I'm going to use for video. And so my RAM addresses will start at 0 and go up through 9FFFF then rolling over to the next byte at A0000 my video will start and it'll run to B F F F F and then at C I'll start my ROM all the way up to F F F F F. And I think that's going to work out for me and I've started to kind of lay out how I'm going to do my decode and something like this might work for me. So the RAM is probably the more complicated piece and I, I need to put more thought into this but I think for now what I can simply say is if if A19 is 0 or A19 is 1, A18 and A17 are 0, I'm in RAM. So that, that logic I can build pretty easily with some, some typical logic gates or with my PSOC. Then when I get to the video, I'm going to be looking for A19 to be a 1, A18 to be a 0, and A17 to be a 1. And then after that, I don't care. That should all be within this A to B, F, 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 F. And then my ROM this top quarter meg, uh, A19 and A18 will both have to be a one and then the rest of the, the bits I don't care about. So that's what I think I wanna to start to plan my decode logic around and I need to put more thought into that and make sure I'm not overlooking something but I, I think, just my quick layout of this, that should be uh, pretty close to correct. And then off to the right, those last three columns are just uh, how I will actually do my enable. So where, where my RAM would be enabled, it would be low, or my video would be enabled, it would be low, or my ROM would be enabled, it would be low. Uh, so that's my plan. And as far as the addressing, you know, that's easy to do. That's just simply opening up a, an Excel file and trying to think through this and, and come up with a plan. But then I've got the actual, what am I gonna do for graphics device? And previously in my 65816 build, I built this video card. It's actually a multi-piece card. There's a, a base ISA card. And at this point, the, the physical format is basically an ISA slot. Uh, so a card that I'm, I'm building that fits into an ISA slot. And, and then that card takes daughter cards that have memory on them. And each of these daughter cards can hold a pair of 32K uh, dual port static RAM. So that, if I add that up, that's 32 times four. If I had two daughter cards, 
and that'd give me 128k of RAM. Uh, the way I I architected this or designed it as I can run four daughter cards it's just it gets to be bulky so I've been running two cards and that is sufficient for me to run 320 by 240 with one byte of color data per pixel and uh, that that has worked out pretty well up to this point that card I actually have had running I've got videos posted on it where you know this is this is what one of the captured outputs that I captured from it just when I was initially working on it and uh, I've, I've got moving sprites on it and transparent sprites and all of that seems to be okay. And the sprites are all software based. Uh, they're, they're done in the assembly, not hardware based sprites. And you can see I'm doing three bits of red, three bits of green and two bits of blue. And there's some things I think I wanna creatively do with that, uh, but that, that has worked well. And, and you know, if you do the math, I don't need all of this 128K uh, I actually have a little bit of leftover in that that RAM if I run that resolution, but that resolution is plenty high for what a 286 is going to be able to drive effectively anyway. So um, this is what I'm going to try to use. Now this card, some comments about it. It it's pretty big. I don't know. Looking at it right here, you're not going to get a good feel for the size, but in an upcoming picture, you'll see how it stacks up against the rest of my system. It's it's pretty good sized. And the ISA connector down below is, is kind of following the ISA pinout, but it's not entirely following the ISA pinout. You know, I can't really, I would not say that it's an ISA compliant type of card. It was just the physical connector that I chose to use. So I have this card here and obviously, uh, what, well, what you're seeing here, first of all, is the card with two daughter cards stacked on it. And that would, you know, snap into one of my ISA slots in my 65816 system where I laid it out in kind of an ATX format. And that that has been great. And so I kind of want to move towards something like that as I continue to build up my 286 system. So how am I going to do that? I do have a PCB on order for my 286 and that'll be the first step. I I don't want to try to wire in an ISA slot into these breadboards. I can do it. I have the necessary PCBs and I, I could run all of that. But being that I have this PCB here in route, it's, it's in shipping right now to me. This is what I'm going to try to get running is this system on the PCB. And the, the changes that I've made since I ordered this PCB Probably the, the main thing is some of this math coprocessor. I've had to add some additional logic as far as uh, when the, the bus latches are enabled for uh, the data bus. And so I'll have to do a little bit of tweaking uh, to, make, to make that work here. And I'll probably use my PSOC and use that for that extra NAND chip that I put on my system. And I'll probably have to do a little bit of bodge work to make that all work, but I think that should be doable. And the other thing I've done is I've run some extra signals to the PSOC and the Arduino Mega. I also put in those extra chips for the monitoring of the internal data bus. And so I have to decide what I want to do with that. What I might do is just uh, add those chips to this anyways. Or maybe just put a little uh, daughter type of board that I stack on top of this uh, to, to do that so that my Arduino is fully logging. And I think what I can do is I left room here that I could easily just make a little PCB, well not make a PCB, I have little uh, solderable breadboards. I'll grab one that fits here, add those shifters that I talked about in a previous video, and then I'll have to connect those 16 data lines and basically wire up that whole thing with a little daughter board on here for now. And that's fine, that's not a big deal. That's easy to do, it won't look super pretty, but it will get this PCB hopefully functional if there aren't any other major issues with it. I do have a pair of ISA slots on here that I think have all the connections I'm gonna need are pretty close. If I look at the previous card I built, this is what that card looks like, and I have refactored it to look like this. So I shrunk it a little bit, and I have brought all of those dual port static RAM chips onto the main board. And so this board here basically has all my RAM on it. It has all of the necessary functionality to generate the horizontal and vertical sync and really output my, my 
you know, 8-bit color uh, that, that I'm looking to support here. So I've got my, my support for 320 by 240 by one byte for color data. If this card works, then I should be able to snap it into one of these two slots and see if I can actually get this VGA output coming out of the system. So that is my plan. Real quickly, I'll walk through maybe the schematic of this card, the screen version, the updated version, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm thinking. Um, now, this previous card should be essentially the same thing. There's not anything in the schematic that's really different. I had to add a little bit of a address decoding on this one, but the general core of the video card is the same, so it's it's proven to work well for me. And here I flipped over to Easy EDA. I've still got work to do on this, so this is a work in process, so treat it accordingly. First of all, I have an ISA slot in the upper left, and the signals I know I'm going to need, I'm going to need address lines up through 19. I'm going to need my lower byte of my data. I don't think I'm going to use the upper byte of data. I'm going to just basically treat this as a, an 8-bit type of IO, IO type of card. 8 bits at a time is all I'm going to work with because each pic pixel is 8 bits, and I'm not going to try to figure out if I should write the upper pixel or lower pixel or a pair of pixels. I'm just going to assume that I'm going to read a byte, and that byte is for whatever pixel that I am addressing. And I've got my memory write and memory read signals up here that will be coming in. And I don't know if I need much else besides that, quite honestly. Because really the way I've, I've designed this card is I can, from the 286, simply reference the memory on the video card, which I have four of those down here, four of those chips. I can just reference the memory by address and directly write to it. And I don't have to worry about DMA or handing over control or anything like that because I'm using dual port memory. So my 286 can be writing to these four dual port static RAMs simultaneously as I'm drawing or refreshing my VGA output. And I think those are the only signals that I'm going to need coming in. And if I go look at one of these memory chips just as an example, you can see I'm bringing in on the left side of it here. So dual port, right? think of it as uh, you, you have two ways to get into the RAM. One is going to be from my 286 and one is going to be from the video card internal side. So from the 286, I'm going to bring in the addressing. And then from that, uh, and, and that's something I'm going to have to double check that this is all still going to work the way I expect it to. So I, I might have a little tweaking to do. i got to think through this too and see if I'm missing anything. But it has uh, basically a select or an enable line. It has an output line. And then am I reading or writing? And if I look at those signals like the CEL or, well, CEL is the only one I have to worry about here on the left side the memory uh, read or write that's going to come from the 286 system but the CEL I just have some logic up here that looks at address line 15 and 16 so if I go back to this presentation for a second one of the things I showed was this so I will have an enable line well, I can do decode logic that says if A19, 18, and 17 look like this, 101, and that I'm doing that check down here. So here's my 101. This is a four input NAND. So if I have A19 high, A18 low, I inverted it. A17 high, and then this other one's just tied high. That will give me my low output of this called vid OE. So I've got my output enable coming in so I know when my video card should be enabled based on the addressing. And then I can look at A15 and 16, the next two down so I know I'm in video and then these next two will tell me which of my four memory chips am I in, basically 32K at a time if I'm going through this correctly in my head. And so then basically based on the address, I know that my video outputs can be enabled and based on A15 and 16, I'm gonna know which of the four memory chips I should be reading and writing. And so 
this first one has CEL going to it. The next one has CEL1, then CEL2, and then if I scroll right, CEL3. So that's how I'm going to basically be flipping between the four different memory chips from the physical memory address perspective. Now on the other side of the memory is the rest of the video card that needs to write to that. So if I go look at the video card circuit for a bit, first of all I need a pixel clock. So with this I'm going to come in with a 25 megahertz crystal, uh, an oscillator, a full can oscillator. And I'm going to use a 7474 flip-flop just so I get a really nice clean uh, clock out of that and that'll give me a, a, a 12.5875 megahertz clock that I'll use as my pixel clock. And then I have this section up here that basically is half a dozen of these uh, 74161s. And I don't think I'm actually even using LS anymore. I'm probably using AC or ACH, uh, maybe HC, but um, 161s regardless. And so with those then, along with a pair of GALs, so these are PLDs, and those are actually containing the logic to get me my horizontal sync and my vertical sync. So these are going to get me all my sync signals. Out of all of these basically counters then, I'm going to be able to build an address so I'll know where I'm at uh, as it's going through and drawing the screen. And I'll then be able to read from the RAM, the static, the static memory basically that's on my video card as it's going through that and whatever's in the memory is what's going to get drawn out to the screen. And so I've got a VGA output connector, I have my appropriate resistors, uh, I have this uh, 273 in here to basically uh, latch this. And then as far as the RAM, when the internal video card needs to write to it, I'm doing a very similar thing with a 138 here, and that's going to allow me to enable one of the four static RAM chips based on where it's at in the internal addressing as it scrolls through the, the video screen. And this is really the same design I've used before, so I, I know that that has worked. It's just making sure that I'm thinking through the right addresses and things like that, and as I, I get into the rest of this, with the 286 being 16-bit, does that, does that mess anything up for me or, or do I need to rethink this? But this is where I'm at right now, so I'll, I'll put some more thought into it if anybody's catching anything. My biggest concern is probably, you know, is this still the right addressing to go from A2 on this all the way up to A14 or do I need to shift that up to A3 to A15? So I've got to think about that. But this is what I have, and uh, what I'm going to try to move forward with is, is this type of a design. And so what that's going to then do, if I look at the uh, actual PCB for this, and I've got this already fully routed, so uh, on the long shot that what I've thought through so far is, is right, uh, you can see here I've got my VGA connector, all the resistors and the signals going into that. I have these actually set up these holes here to basically line up with standard mounting brackets for an ISA slot. So there's a Keystone 90, or 9202 and a Keystone 9203. That's a, I think a common brand. That's what I've used up to this point, but that's their model number 9203 or 9202 so that I can get a bracket if I was going to put this into a case and it should fit those just fine. And I've been, I try to be really careful with all the sizing so that this uh, maintains uh, compatibility so that it will fit in an ISA slot in an ATX case. Obviously with my board that's coming for my 286 motherboard or system board, it's not ATX form factor so it really doesn't matter other than it should plug in with this slot down here. But later, as I evolve that 286, I'll probably will build an ATX version of it. And I would like this card to just snap into one of the slots. I suppose we could look at what the 3D version looks like. This will be nice to have though. So there's starting to look like what, my, uh, what I'm gonna see for my, my video card.
Uh, so that's my plan. And I guess if any of you are catching things I'm not thinking of here, uh, I've got to do a little bit uh, more just thinking through and making sure that the way I'm going to address this is going to work. I'll have to redo a bunch of stuff in my PSOC to address or to handle the new addressing modes that I'm or new addressing here that I'm doing this new memory layout. So I'll I'll start thinking through what do I need to do on that. That shouldn't be too bad. But my goal would be to take this board, create a video card that looks like that, and be able to plug it in. Let me know. Any feedback's always appreciated. And uh, we'll see if I can maybe get this ordered up uh, here sometime soon. Uh, and maybe one last comment is I did build it as a two layer. And so that, that's part of why you see so many of these uh, tracks on here. Uh, there's just a lot to be run as a two layer, as a two layer. But that also gives me some flexibility that I can pop legs up or cut traces if I don't have any middle layers to deal with. And it lowers the cost. So these boards, I guess I didn't actually look at a price. But if I want to look at a price real quick, I can go back here and see what it will come in. I'm going to guess these are $10 boards, maybe $12 boards. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, so $13 actually is all for five of these boards. So the boards uh, are really inexpensive. So for me to order, order a set, there's probably $20 just shipping on top of that. So you know it ends up being maybe six bucks a board, seven bucks a board by the time it's all shipped. But that's not too bad. And that will maybe let me experiment here and see if I can get some progress on this. And then of course, to go with all of this is the assembly work to actually write to all that video memory from my 286. That's all I have for now. I'll catch you in the next video.